Hi, everyone. By a show of hands, who here tonight owns a pet or has ever cared for someone else's pet? I think we all have. And I think we all know how important clear communication is. But unfortunately, sometimes those care details can fall through the cracks. So what if there was a better way to make sure that the pet owner is in communication with their pet sitter so that the sitter knows all the details that they need to adequately care for a pet, whether it's where the house key is, where the cleaning supplies are in case there is an accident, or who do I call in case of an emergency? And so that's how our Critter Sitter was born. We thought that that would be a good way to pull all of that information together. So I'm going to pass it over to Bob and tell you a little more. Thank you, Amanda. Um, so we're going to go over and check out one of our users here, Angela. She is an owner. We're going to log in and see her dashboard. There's a cute, fluffy cat, a donkey, <laughs> and a cute dog. So you click on Nutmeg, and um, this is your one-stop shop for all your vital pets information. And we have authentication on each page, so we know which user can view which information because you can have sensitive data in here and some phone numbers. So let's add a critter, and we're going to have Angela add a chameleon by the name of Charizard. Um, and with all this data here, uh, we learned a new database called Postgres, and for a few reasons. Uh, one, it is uh, object relational. It's also asset compliant, compliant, which means that it is uh, data integrity and uh, reliable, and it handles a lot of huge data sets. So we have sitter information, we have credit information, we have checklists, we have tasks. So all that data needs to be uh, filtered down uh, in a really effective way. So Angela adds the critter, and we can go down to the page again and see that it is Charizard. Look how happy he is. So we're going to go click on Charizard, and we're going to create a checklist for an upcoming visit. So on this page, uh, Angela will select uh, Tony, who they already connected through the app. And we're going to do it for this Saturday on the 17th. Now, you can make this five days, 10 days, 15 days, and the checklist will automatically duplicate for each day, and they're independent of each other. So let's see, some tasks that community would do. I don't know, feed some cricket? That sounds delicious. Uh, let's take, uh, take me out. For, uh, for rolling in the house. You'll walk around, get some exercise. It's good for chameleons. And then uh, lastly, we are going to have some time, some bath time, just to make sure the next time it changes colors, it glistens. So, this is a checklist for Charizard. We're going to save that checklist, and we can scroll down to the bottom of the page and see that that is for Tony. So I'm going to pass it over to Katie, who's going to show you a sitter's view with Tony. Thanks, Bob. So, uh, as we will see in a moment, Tony, another already registered user, the sitter, is going to log into his account. And when he gets to his dashboard, he's going to see that he already has a checklist waiting for him. What? Right there. So he's going to be able to click on it. When he gets there, he's going to see all the pertinent information that the owner wants him to know about the, the pet. And he'll be able to check off the tasks and even enter some comments that will be sent then to the pet owner. Um, incidentally, he will get, or she, Angela, will get a text. We employed the Twilio API for text and some SendGrid API for emails. And we also ended up ultimately using the AWS S3 storage bucket for third-party file hosting for all the awesome pictures. So Tony checks out the list. He can go and see, yes, I did it. Their timestamp, their date stamped. And we go back to Angela, and what? There's her text. She got a text. And it's got a link to the page. She also can check her email. And she got an email. And it's even got the comments from, uh, from Tony, letting her know what's going on. But she can also then click to the link, go back to the site, go to her dashboard, and see that all the tasks have been completed. And we'll also be able to see all the time and date stamps for that. So she, so Tony's accountable on that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, one thing that we really wanted to focus on a lot with this project, because we wanted it to be very intuitive and simple to use, was uh, just to make it basic, make it simple and intuitive. So we got a lot of user feedback. We had a lot of user testing on that. And so a lot of that feedback was really valuable for us. Uh, so I'm going to give it back to Amanda now. Amanda. Thank you, Katie. 
As you can see, our site is viewable on any size device, but we designed it for mobile first from day one. We wanted it to be as user-friendly as possible. Um, and that way it could be you know, concise, clear information at your fingertips to provide a better quality of care for the pets. We created this as an accountability app for animals, but really it could be used for a myriad of things. Uh, we really had a great time working on this project together as a team. We used a lot of uh, care programming. We would go off on our own and investigate problems and implement solutions. We'd come back together, we'd share ideas. And uh, this has been a really great team to work with. I'm really excited about how it turned out. And I uh, would really like to talk to you more in more detail about it over at our table at the end of this. So thank you so much for your time and have a good night.